Hi everyone, and thank you for watching this intro on the guide Constructing Low-Rise Confined Masonry Buildings. My name is Jorge Moreno, I'm a postgraduate structural intern at EERI, and I will walk you through this resource. This guide has been prepared by Tom Shacker and Tim Hart, who are both members of EERI's Confined Masonry Network, with the support of experts in confined masonry around the world. These participants played an important role as contributors and reviewers. You can download it for free in the link that appears in the description. It's available in English and Spanish. This handbook is targeted to a broad audience, building technicians, construction managers, architects, civil engineers, students, or those following practical training on confined masonry building sites. The language used throughout this guide is simple, and it doesn't delve into complex technical engineering details. In many of the most earthquake-prone areas of the world, one- and two-story houses built by masons without formal training or self-built are vulnerable to collapse. This guide focuses on the confined masonry technique, which offers excellent results of earthquake resistance in countries where it's part of the building code. They have been developed by practitioners rather than by engineers, and therefore respond well to the technical and financial capacities of small-scale contractors and self-builders. Constructing low-rise confined masonry buildings describe these techniques with clear and concise instructions, punctuated regularly with illustrations and photos throughout. This guide carefully describes basic rules for the selections of safe building sites and for house layouts, while giving detailed instructions on the construction process. Photos include examples to highlight both safe and unsafe practices, paired with clear explanations. The guide gives indications on practical detailing of confined masonry, but also includes basic information on good construction practices in general. This guide has an important restriction. It explains how to build an earthquake resistant house with a maximum height of two stories, ground floor and upper floor. This entails that for taller buildings, an experienced engineer must be consulted for specific calculations. This guide is divided into three parts. General aspects of confined masonry construction, confined masonry step by step, and additional issues. Now we'll go over the content of each section. This first part provides a solid background on confined masonry, where the advantages over other similar techniques, such as on reinforced masonry or mason frame systems, are described. It's worth noting that confined masonry uses the same materials as the widely used reinforced concrete frame technique, but in a different sequence, making the system more forgiving and simple. This introductory section also elaborates on general rules to build an earthquake resistant house, describing appropriate building size to reduce the vulnerability against earthquakes and floods. The main elements of a confined masonry building to identify their function in the structural system, good construction practices for the building configuration, the appropriate layout of the elements, and the required building materials and tools. As mentioned before, these points are clearly illustrated with photos and drawing to better understand each aspect of the confined masonry construction. After the overview of the first part, the reader is in good shape to look into the confined masonry components and the procedure to ensure the good quality and behavior of the structure. The second part, confined masonry step by step, delves into the construction process of each element in a sequential manner, starting off with the site preparation. It discusses the process of clearing and leveling the ground before excavating the soil. Moreover, two different methods to trace right angles are presented. When the site is ready, and the trenches excavated, the construction workers direct their attention to the structure's foundation. This book emphasizes the importance of continuous foundations in confined masonry systems and provides insight into the proper width and depth of these elements. The confined masonry is characterized by vertical and horizontal ties to hold the masonry walls together. These are reinforced concrete confining elements. The Constructing Low-Rise Confined Masonry Buildings Guide portrays a standard detailing and specified minimum sections for these elements to be resistant enough to withstand gravity loads, lateral loads induced by earthquakes, and to transfer these forces to the walls. In this technique, the walls are the most important elements of the structure because they ensure the earthquake resistance of a building. That being said, special attention is needed for the masonry units, wall height, correct placement of bricks or blocks, openings, and a good connection between the wall and the tie columns. The underlying principle of confined masonry is to build the walls first and the tie columns later. Therefore, 
it's mandatory to respect this sequence. Moreover, this guide recommends pouring the concrete for the tie columns in incremental segments of no more than 1.2 meters or 4 feet. Windows and doors are essential elements in any building, but unfortunately they do weaken structures. For this reason, they need to be reinforced properly. This guide describes two methods of reinforcement, using vertical bands similar to tie columns or horizontal seismic bands. An adequate reinforcement improves the wall's capability of resisting earthquake forces, which is beneficial for the whole structure. Following up the construction sequence, once completing the walls and tie columns, the handbook addresses the tie beams and free-spanning beams for confining walls and for load-bearing respectively. The slabs provide rigidity to the whole building and require to be well connected with the ring beam, which are the tie beams on top of the wall. The guide goes over the construction process of two different types of slabs, full concrete slabs and lightweight slabs. The next chapters treat both the comfort rules and engineering rules that the stairs have uh, designed have to follow and provide some recommendations and construction details for extending the house either vertically or horizontally. After going over the second part of the manual, the reader will have a very clear idea on how to get started with the construction of a confined masonry house. Lastly, part 3 of the manual deals with two different aspects. Specific concerns in confined masonry that may or may not be present when building a house and the quality assurance to monitor materials and inspect workmanship. This is critical to the integrity of the building structure. The shop window problem, for instance, points out the case in which wide window fronts reduces the stability of the building during an earthquake. The handbook suggests to include additional walls in the other direction to stabilize the long walls. Another issue arises with house built on slopes. In order to create a level surface for the building and to avoid geotechnical problems, a series of recommendations, construction rules, and examples are described. When a pitched roof is present in a house, it's important to strive for its resistance against hurricanes and earthquakes. Consequently, the roof has to be well attached to the rest of the house using anchor bolts, rebars, anchor bands, or other proper connections. The quality assurance helps to ensure compliance with the approved plans, specifications, relevance codes, ordinances, and guidelines. Even though in some countries it's not mandatory, the Constructing Low-Rise Confined Mainstream Buildings Guide advocates for developing and enforcing it. Ed. The handbook provides a sample checklist for reference, including representative inspections to be performed on a confined mainstream project. At the end of the manual, there are two appendices. Part A, which consists of tables with different material proportions for concrete, mortar, and plaster mixes whereas part B elucidates the procedure to determine the number of shear walls in both directions. This intro showcases the main features of the handbook constructing low-rise confined mainstream buildings. Even though it does not examine the technical details, these guidelines have proven excellent results when it comes to earthquake resistance. Advocating for confined mainstream construction technology in housing projects leads to more resilient communities, fewer casualties, and less economic losses after major seismic events. This valuable reference is available in English and Spanish, and it's free of charge. The link to get this handbook is in the video description. We also encourage you to visit our website, www.confinementsry.org. We appreciate your interest in this intro, and we hope you find it useful. In case you have any questions, please email us at eeri.eeri.org. Once again, thank you for joining us.